So here we go. This is the episode that supposedly really lighthearted. So Lele, this is a new year. Uh, I, I know you had a very long vacation, you know, uh, both of us. And, you know, there was a tweet I saw on, there was a tweet, I, what kind of mag react? You know, someone said, the, the thing they didn't tell us about adulting is watching your parents also growing old and all. No, so, so that made me think about a lot of things. You don't have to battle this, but I just had to get this out. And one of the things about the new year was, you know, the, the, and the, the Christmas and was the privilege I had of spending time with my grandma, right? With my parents and everyone wow. like that. So I really appreciate that. But it also made me realize... Hey, hey, ka pa pala. Ka naman. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm really grateful for the thank God. Uh, because, bro, I mean, I didn't have the chance during pandemic and all. It was very difficult for a lot of us, right? And I have very sociable people, including my grandma. So I think it was very hard for her when I couldn't, we couldn't meet her as much before during the pandemic time. So we're glad that there's that time. But also that made me realize a lot of things about me. Like, yeah, I'm not 20s anymore. Yeah, you know, you know like <laughs> suddenly you feel a little bit like vulnerable. Suddenly you feel about like, oh, I'm not the same top G maybe. Um, so I, I had a lot of soul searching. So after probably a year or so, I'm getting back again to reading self-help. And of course, my favorites are always, always uh, Stoics. And I used to do a lot of Zen Buddhism and I see a lot of similarity among all of them. You know? so, mm -hmm. uh, so if others do Jordan Peterson or Andrew Tate, this is what I do, Marcus Aurelius, <laughs> Epictet to Seneca. Oh. I like them because these were men of power, what were also men of ethics. Combining mm -hmm. is very difficult. Very, that's why I admire these people because you can be a man of ethics if you just withdraw from everything and go to the mountain, right? And it's mm -hmm. so, so hard to keep sanity and you know conscientiousness and all of that and humility when you're in the middle of it, when you're in the corridors of power. And as someone who deals with power and politics and all of that, I'm not saying I'm powerful, but so I, I really appreciated the- Or you talk to powerful people. Exactly. Yeah. And and let's not be, you know, and not, not someone to be presumptuous, but, you know, we have power too, right? Intellectual mm -hmm. uh, platforms, uh, power. You know, the, the, so there's that. And then, of course, Zen Buddhism also helped me a lot back in the day, in the younger days, in terms of, uh, you, you term the via negativa. Now, sometimes you just have to declutter, get away the toxicity. So meditation really helped me, you know, whenever I'm so stressed or troll, I get death threats, attack, whatever, you know, because many people ask me, how can you do what you're doing, right? Like you keep on doing things, you get attacks, you fight. I say, yeah, I meditate. You know, I put an hour aside every day, at least an hour uh, to meditate, breathe in, breathe out, the whole process. Then I get back and I do a podcast. I Kaya mo isang oras, Richard? Um, yeah, like 30 minutes will be meditation and thinking and then 20, 15 minutes could be reading, etc. Or a mm. bit of stretching yoga. So at least for me, you have to put an hour of your day aside for quote-unquote self-care. It's very, very... There, that's, there was a time... There, was, Bayana, a time, there was a time during the pandemic, but there was a time in the pandemic where I did like blocks, um, maybe yeah. two months, non-stop. Every day, one hour ako nakaupo in, in meditation. Oh, wow. Um, I it was very educational, but I, I realize now that it's it's not sustainable for me to yeah. devote that much time. It's and, and one hour siya but it was, it was very good while I did it. I'm, I I might consider trying it again, but it's like the demand on your time, and of course, you it's sometimes even physical demand. Eh? Kasi oh, yeah, it's difficult. Po, yeah, you can sit for one hour, you need to find a really good way to sit in order to do that um that's just a side story but i wanted to ask you so what is your what is your history relative to the literature on self care self help i know yeah. that's yeah. a very charged and loaded word yeah. but what's your what's your history in, in what's your history there were you cynical about it did you discover it late in life like how, how have you dealt with it yeah well i thought let's just say the birth of my intellectual side and all of these books and all of that was when I really started play, uh, reading Plato and I really read them, like really, really read them. And I'm, I'm indebted, shout out to Felipe Miranda, you know, my professor, of course, founder of Pulse Asia, co-founder. He was the ah. one who pushed me and I'm proud. I topped that class. I think I get better grade in that class than anyone else ever. Uh, but after that, I got obsessed with Greek and Greco-Roman philosophy and all. So it started when I was around 17, 18. And I never looked back after that. I just was... I was just consuming it and I keep on coming back to it over the years. But stoicism was something new to me. It just came to me around uh, three, four years ago. If, you know, my dad was in ICU. We were going through a very difficult process and all. And the thing about stoicism is that, you know, this is the philosophy of men of action facing very difficult, uh, you know, trials and all and trying to come out of it in the best way possible. Of course, stoicism of, unfortunately has some, you know, there are a lot of uh, popular misconceptions like, you know, that stoics are like, 
parang zombie emotional zombie and all that's not true right it, the idea the basic idea of you know stoicism is that you have to accept you cannot control the world mm-hmm. there are only a few things you can control focus on that and life would be far more meaningful and productive and all of that. So have the humility to accept you don't, you cannot control the world, but at the same time, have the discipline to work on the few things that you can truly control, including your emotional response. And I realized that was difficult. Then you combine it with meditation, Zen Buddhism, it perfectly makes sense. How can you, you know, relax your remote if you don't do meditation or yoga, et cetera. So I try to combine them and, and, and it has done me wonders. And the thing about Stoics is that it, it's, they believe in neuroplasticity. Of course, they didn't call it that. But the idea is that you have to create certain habits of thinking, right? Mm. So that you avoid that negative thoughts. So if you keep on reading really good stuff, whether it's Seneca, Pictus, whatever, you create a very different perspective on life, including trials and difficulties in life. No, and so that that was very helpful to me. That was very very helpful. I don't I don't know how I could have got through many many trials, including the difficulties during the pandemic time. You know, career difficulties, emotional personal difficulties, etc. Um, without having philosophical discipline. Now, but I just realized while getting more active on YouTube that a lot of these self help industry guys are now appropriating these ancient mm-hmm. philosophies and turning them into YouTube shorts and all of that, yeah. right? And yeah. I noticed, and this is where the Jordan Petersons and Andrew Tate's coming to be. They all quote Stoics too. And of course, I feel kind of like, no, mga scammers kayo. <laughs> like, of course, it's a part of me like that. And, I'm, and I'll be honest, like, I like some stuff that Jordan Peterson says, but there are a lot of stuff I don't agree with him because I know he's doing it because it's what his audience wants to hear. And I know it's audience capture case. No offense to the guy. But so... For me, yes, I am very skeptical of the whole modern self-help books and all of that. And I like 12 rules for life. Really? You can, you can, life only has 12 rules. <laughs> like, you know, like, have you bothered to read Carl Jung or, you know, Nietzsche? Yeah. You would realize there are no 12 rules, right? Life is very complicated. It takes way more than that. Have you read Dostoevsky and all of this? Uh, well, Jordan Pearson quotes from them. But if you really read those stuff, you realize you're not going to become uh-huh. impressed much but at the same time all the respect to people like Jordan Pearson I think as a clinical psychologist they help a lot of people I appreciate that but the YouTube version of them I'm seeing the viral version of them it really cheapens the whole thing so yeah I still have a bias against self-help Kaya ako, Lelo, I'll, of course please come you don't, in. Use the, you don't use the word self-help yeah for me it's it's more like if ancient philosophy and I'll call it uh-huh. but but, uh-huh. but but if 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 we can translate Asian philosophy into a kind of a vlogger, YouTuber way, not digestible, and then you can encourage people to go and read on their, on their own later on, because I don't want them to just watch my six seconds, whatever. No, I want them, damn it, go and buy the book. It's not that expensive. You can buy have it for that, like $2. That engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read it on your own. So just watch me so that you can encourage, and then you read it on your own. And that's what... Mahalap ko pa yan sa used bookstores eh, sa Pilipinas. Sobrang mura ng mga libro na yan. Sobrang mura sa ano, sa Shopee. Everybody publishes Shopee, them. Everybody publishes them. There, there, there are abundant number of public... There are, exactly. There's an abundance of publications. So what I'm exploring, Lelo, right now is maybe I should do more of these things, you know, uh, and how to encourage people to read on their own. Na hindi lang umasa sa 10 seconds. Kasi ganito, bro, eh, I don't like na, na fast food yung mm-hmm. philosophy. It's an insult. You know, okay, before so, you move on, I'm going yeah. to do something that may be the audience. Here's a New Year's resolution for me, which is to take more steps. So actually, I am standing on a um, on a desk treadmill. So I'm going to start moving now while we're talking. But anyway, go on. Really? Yeah, yeah. Look, oh, so you're see, double timing? <laughs> no, no. So the treadmill is under. I'm on a standing desk. There's a treadmill under my desk, and so I'm able wow. to type I'm, 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 my work while. Na, na, na ko sa, uh, yeah. Now, ako when I'm on treadmill in gym, I listen to podcasts a lot. Of okay, podcasts. that's how I cheat. So I. I okay, so so under- sorry, sorry to, dis- to disturb you. Go ahead. So ayaw mo nang bite. You don't want it bite size. You want to direct people to these kind of primary texts. Yeah, so something like that. Read on your own, but or you put a bite size that is much closer to the essence. You know what I'm saying? At least it, I want it to be the finger pointing at the moon, right? Uh, and then I want them to explore the moon themselves. I mean, pushing mm-hmm. the, the the metaphor. I don't know. You came, came Bruce Lee. 
Yeah, 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 something like that. Focus on the hand. Yeah, exactly. Focus yeah, on yeah. what the hand is pointing yeah. to. This is from yeah. uh, I forget the exact quote, but this is from this is from Enter the Dragon. You know, one of the great. Yeah, it's it's kind of then. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. so. And of course, I mean, Lelo, you know that I, I also do martial arts and all of that. So that also instilled in me a lot of ancient Eastern philosophy, Maganon. So I'm trying to get back to that. And and my point is, you're right. You, you, we talked about this. The problem we have today is that. A lot of our fellow men, right? I don't want to go into the whole woke debate and all. They really need good role models, and the problem is that either they have scammers like Andrew Tate's of this world, uh, and then they have the more respectable ones like you know Jordan Peterson, or they, I, they almost, for me, the respectable you know, okay, but okay, go ahead. Uh, version of that, right? I mean, it's a spectrum, right? And then. And then let's be honest. Well, iba, yung, yung, uh, yung, yuval, yuval Harari, mga parang oh, yeah. su- speaking, of, academic, okay. speaking of Yuval Harari, actually he's the reason why I got encouraged to do yoga and meditation. Because that mm-hmm. guy does a lot. That's, he's like next level meditation. He goes to India, does the training and all. And apparently it helps his way of writing and all. Yeah, I know that both of us are quite skeptical of some of the way the oh. pop history, let's call it that way, pop history business. Uh, I, I completely see it. And uh, Kenga, I love the new book. The best book for me in 2022 was the book uh, the, the Dawn of Everything by two fantastic anthropologists. It's a brilliant book. It Graeber, by the Graeber, by one? Hindi. Yeah, Graeber, exactly. Ah, okay, okay. Oh. Really good book because it really makes fun of the whole Harari, Stephen Pinker, cottage ah. industry, right? That, that kind of pop psychology. Mm-hmm. So I love that. No? Uh, but I also admire that book because it's an effort by two solid scholars No, I mean, bring references nila solid, diba? to reach out to the public. And it did very, very well. It did very, very well. So for me, like, maybe that's what we should aspire to because the problem with really smart people or re- people who really know the craft is that few of them really try to reach out or they're, they're, they're snub, right? Or they're misanthropic or all of the above, right? Intellectuals tend to be like that, misanthropic and snub and clickish and all of that. So for me, the reason I, I watch, I go, I do the vlogging and all is because I want to go against the tendency. Right of being music and clickish and all of that, yeah. I also have a, a strange relationship with the word self help. I actually prefer self care. Oh you know, yeah, that's what I use. Care of yeah. yourself. And that's that's very also very Greek, diba? the the care of the self. You self help because merong ano eh, merong connotations. May Amer- may certain American connotations. Eh. You yes. self help because may history in the United States of really bad advice. Like for example. You know, one of the big self-help gurus of the U.S. is see see Norman Vincent Peale, and yeah, yeah he's, exactly. He's he's Mr. Power of positive thinking, diba? So if you have a negative yeah. thought, kalimutan mo na lang just, just Ayan, the care of the self, Michel Foucault. Oh yeah, and the care yeah, of the that's self. That's where the first time I came across as a philosophical concept. Treat your life as as if it's oh. a work of art. Like work of art, yes. Thematic about oh. it. I love it. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Pero yung yung power of positive thinking, kasi ano yun, parang self manipulation yun eh, and uh, parang It's 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 really scary because if you don't focus on the negative things, you you don't see injustice, right? You you yeah. you don't see problems, and you you're just bright sided all 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 the time. And that's that's why I recommend this book called Bright Sided by Barbara Aaron, right? Where right, when right, she looks right, at right, the problems right, with right. positive thinking, because you don't improve unless you acknowledge the negative. And if you just keep manipulating yourself into thinking that everything's all right, that's that's a way to to live your life. So I think in parang very insidious. And remember, Norman Vincent Peale was the kind kind of the one of the major influences on Donald Trump. That's why exactly. Donald Trump. Yeah. Everything's yeah. going okay. Yeah. There's no problem with COVID. Ganyan din deny yung reality for the sake of positive thinking. And I think um, I think if I'm not mistaken, Peel was Trump's pastor at one point. Yeah. So so the kind of the, the the direction is is quite direct. So iba yung no, yung toxic positivity bro. O yung yung worst yung toxic positivity or yeah. yung mga stupid things like the secret, yung if I just wish it hard enough mangyayari siya. Yung yung kind of like Bullshit, na talaga. So there, there's, I mean, there's real bullshit there. And I think one way to, sur- <laughs> to circumvent the bullshit is to is to go back to ancient Basically. wisdom. Yung talagang sinala na, kasi ay yung 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 ano na yan, yung stoicism na yung or Buddhism, for example. Sinala ito ng libu libong taon ng mga tao. And alam natin kung bakit yeah. meron siyang wisdom. So it's not the, they're not just tips for for improving your life. They're 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 actually they're 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 it's it's wisdom. Distilled over the centuries, yeah. and that's why I find it really beautiful. Um, I want to go into specifics, actually. So, speaking of self-care, 
Yeah, um, self care, the care both, of the stuff. We yeah. both kind of laid out our perspectives on this uh, New Year. It doesn't have to be a New Year resu- New Year's resolution, but what are you what are what are you doing? Like, what what concrete steps are you doing to take care of yourself this year? No, for me, the, uh, I don't know how you do it, but for me, uh, for if you really want to pick up a new habit, you have to first seriously examine ano mga kulang sa at san ka mali. Because once you figure it out here, and I'm kind of Socratic, I can go three days straight just thinking about one thing, right? Until I figure it out. Then I think, like for instance, this whole vlogging thing was kind of my resolution the other year, right? I ask myself, is this something for me, right? Mapanindigan ko pa ito, di ba? The kind of oh, I, I have to put there. Isn't this going to cheapen me? Is this, this going to... You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, I had many apprehensions, right? doing vlogs and... So I thought about it very seriously for many, many days. And then I realized after, you know, going through a whole, in the rabbit hole, but proper methodical process. Now, I think this is the way forward. So once I was ready in my mind, then the rest had to follow. So ako, I'm still in the process of examining saan ako nakakulang, where are certain anxieties and uh, uh, you know, apprehensions coming from. Uh, so I, I'm having this internal journey right now, and I want to spend more time on this internal journey as much as I'm interested about what's happening outside in the world. Um, and listening, of course, to someone that both of us also very much respect, Adam Tooze, right? Apparently, one reason he's such a brilliant guy is because, you know, when he had to deal with depression, you know, he was reading right and left, everything like that. No, so a part of me is doing, you know, like just random reading of many classics, just as much as I can, nice. and then just recharge myself, coming to the world hungry to share the message. It's like going to the summit and then coming back. I know it sounds a little bit cliche, but mm-hmm. I do that. I need that. So a part of me is thinking, can I do that? Can I afford that? What can I do while I'm having all of my obligations uh, and commitments? The other thing I'm also realizing, Lele, is that... Um, Maybe success is not about accomplishing as many commitments as possible. And sometimes overcommitting yourself and depriving yourself of self-care time is a, is a kind of stupidity and failure, right? So I'm trying to figure out san, san nag, san yung clutter that I have. So to yung, ano, yung, yung one, yung one hour me time mo is, is, is a reflection of that desire yeah. to just. And then after off. that, it's really my subconscious. Remember yung ano, diba? uh, thinking fast and thinking slow, right? So mm-hmm. the thinking slow part is the meditation, and then the other part subconsciously I'm processing it. No? So that's mm-hmm. very important. Okay, uh, now I'm feeling pressure because I'm real. And the other thing is, I w- you, know, you know, the ikigai, no? the Japanese philosophy. And like it says, so there's one thing very interesting I found about it. Uh, it says something like, if sometimes you feel very anxious and all, it actually doesn't mean that something is wrong with you. It just means that you have grown up, grown out yes. a part of yeah, you yeah, yeah. and actually want some new challenges. Some yeah, yeah, yeah. things. It's like, I, that, that really helped me. It's like, oh man, bahada man, it's not that I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, it's yeah. that I want to do something new and exciting. Yeah. And so I'm trying to figure that out. I mean, new there's a there's there's a book now. There's a book now called The Upside of Stress, which I think yeah, is very that's good. Cool. And, that's and the good. entire point that the, the book makes is that people don't die from stress, actually. They die from not knowing how to deal with stress. Uh, and one reason they die from stress is because they think stress is so bad. And that creates a loop whereby they think stress is bad, so stress does become really bad. But if you have a positive kind of approach to stress, not then it's not, apparently as, it's not apparently uh, as as dangerous, right? So yeah. uh, it, it, it's, uh, I, I don't know how... I, it's a TED talk, so I saw it on a TED talk, and then I read the summary of it. So I'm not entirely sure how rigorous the science is behind that, but it's it's definitely food for thought. Um, the other thing that just connected to that, the you, you, the reason why stress can become so deadly for some people is because mm-hmm. they surround it with a lot of negative self talk, like "Oh my God, stress ka, don't be stressed, mama ka," and it's not a very <laughs> nice way of talking to yourself. Yeah. Diba? One your big resolution for this year is actually to be nice to myself, um, yeah. to engage in more positive self-talk. Because ako, ang, for the longest time, ang motivation ko is, tarantado ka, may kulang ka, you need to work harder, you need yeah, to be exactly. better. Yeah, we were talking about this in the debate episode. You just need to be better than everyone else and you need to compete. Whereas, um, you know, the entire thing about positive self-talk is that you take on the position where you are, you're a friend to yourself. So... You know, when you talk to yourself, you ask the question, what would a friend tell you? you know, a friend wouldn't tell you that. A friend would say, you know, actually, you're fine. Yes, you can work on certain things, but you should also celebrate what, what you've already done. Ganyan. 
Um, and and it's a it's just a great way of relating to yourself. And of course, yeah. that connects with meditation practice because when you when you're meditating, where you focus on something, most of the time you're focusing on the breath. And when you start when you fail to focus on the breath, you don't blame yourself. You're just like, okay, it's fine. Get back to it. Right. This friendly attitude you call. Cultivating a friendly attitude towards ourselves, because for I think, and as you say this, for people like us, we're so mean to ourselves, like right? you know, like type A hyper competitive personalities. Yeah. You're we're your really own number one personal. critic. Yeah, you're yeah. your own number one critic. Yeah, that, that in I was just actually listening again. I I know where I'm kind of, but you know, big think sometimes they have interesting videos yeah. there. I mean, they get jijek whatever. The one I was watching last night actually was about chatter, how the inner voice. Messes mm. up with you. Of course, evolutionary biology allowed us to have the inner voice because it allows us to plan. Speak oh, of negativity, negativity, negativity bias. Yeah, yeah. Oh. but it suddenly goes off, off, off the off road. The and, and so the important thing is. So one of the advices that the guy gave is based on a book by this neuroscientist is that you develop rituals that center you, help you to steal. Mm. So for instance, see Rafael Nadal. Whenever he feels stressed, you know, he goes there. He makes a certain. Uh, ritual. He drinks from this and then he drinks from that. In inside juice, inside water, then puts them like that. After that, nagzen na he goes back and plays. So even the hyper competitive guys, mm -hmm. through development of some very uh, elaborate rituals, meaning sequence habits of you know of actions, they they calm themselves down and then they go into this flow phase, you no, know, whereby mm -hmm. they can just let it go and unleash it. So I, I, I'm like I'm fascinated. I, I'm I'm liking this because. You know, the funny thing is that a lot of us, especially people with debate or background or people who want to talk and all, the impression you give to people is you're so arrogant. Ang yabang mo. And, and let's be honest, I think neither of us have problem with self-confidence, right? But at the same time, there's always that inner voice that says you're not good enough. You should be the goal. Yeah, yeah. That's why lumalabas, that's why lumalabas siya as yabang eh. Exactly. You should be the goal. You should be the goal. You, you are better than this. You can do better than that. Publish a book. Why one book? Two books a year. Why two books? You didn't do this. You didn't publish your soul. So I, you know that inner chatter is very important. If you can get that, in, if you can channel it to actually be your friend, then you'll be in a very. I mean, someone said something very nice. No, treat yourself as if you're treating your best friend. I mean, of course. Yeah, you're exactly. Your that. Best friend, right? But but if like, why are we so nice to other people? It's so mean to ourselves. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, right? yeah. It doesn't well, make well, sense. No, una. So you know, like I. One thing I did last year was like to just get over the album is I, I I'm not a depressed person, but I have issues from childhood bullying that I that I've been meaning to like talk out and not to get rid of, but just deal with. And so process, yeah. last year I, I started seeing a therapist. Straight up, like, and it's more normal. Lalo no, because it's I'm in the US and it's a lot more normalized. Like, yeah, it's it's a life. Therapist, like, that's something that we do, we don't do enough in the Philippines. So I said, you know, let me try it out. Let's see if it works. And then what? You you initial resistance because the therapist was like she was making me do things like whenever you see yourself in the mirror, say say you know just say things like you're okay, you're enough, <laughs> that's and so you know, parang, it, it seemed a bit hokey to me. Pero parang yeah. once you get to the and and she's and and I was like very academic about it. So what's what's the literature? Parang ganon pa intano ko. Parang this is called the behavioral therapy. And she's, and she's just like um, I I am a very intuitive person, so just like work on it from an intuitive level. And so I'm like okay, but then I couldn't help myself. I did kind of read up about it, and you know there is real scientific yeah. Yeah. evidence behind yeah. practices like that because nga. You, your inner voice, your inner chatter may negativity balance you, and, and that's good because man, it pres there's a there's an evolutionary benefit. Yeah, it prepares you for inahanap yes, mo yes. inahanap mo yung problema para pwede mong tugunan para hindi ka mamatay para hindi ka kainin ng leon. But at the same time, you know, um, you have to counterbalance that with with a kind of kinder version of yourself. And uh, I I, I found a, a psychologist who was saying na um, and my that that people with with positive relationships with themselves are actually it doesn't blunt your capacity to achieve things. Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes you think that like you like lalo na ako, you need to be a critic to yourself so that you can achieve things because you're your own coach. Eh? And that I sometimes I respond well to like negative coaching, like asama ah, ng performance mo, you need yeah. to do better. So sometimes I do that to myself. Yeah, yeah. Actually, a kind of a, a positive approach to yourself is also good motivation. And so that's that's what I want to try. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, this is very myself, like as nice. I get older, I'm realizing that. Yeah, like I mean, there's a point of like 
you know, like in the same way that the old school coaching is no longer working, right? You're doing 100 push-ups and all, but you do smart oh, yeah, yeah. exercises now. Maybe it's the same principle, right? Right? It's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Back in the day, if you're doing football or karate, they all pak pak. But we realize you don't have to do that. Only five minutes of intense calibrated, you get twice the result. And I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. the same thing applies inside. That actually, I'm very old school coach to myself, but I'm actually very modern to other people when I give advices. And that yeah. symmetry is weird. So I did not upgrade myself internally. Externally, I'm upgraded, yeah. but internally, I'm not. Right? So yeah. that's really something that uh, I, I'm considering that now. Yeah. So... I mean, the way I train, like, for example, my resistance training is um, my coach, the way we do it is we make medium weight easier as opposed to aiming for high weight, uh, for, high weight. for lifting yeah. high. So, for example, you know, in, weight, in, in, in strength sports, there's a thing called the rate of perceived exertion of a set. So, let's uh-huh. say you do squats for three reps. Um, I'd say 175 pounds or whatever. And you say, okay, my uh, my rate of perceived exertion is nine. And nine means if I do one more, that's my limit now. Yeah. 10 means I can't do another another one anymore after that, right? Um, and my coach has always, my coach has always been like, we train at seven. We train at a seven. And then when the seven feels like a six, we increase the weight. That's how, so, uh, so you're never, you're I, never... I and that's how power lifters have changed. So, so if, for example, you know, the, the greatest, the, the goat of power lifting, for example, um, God, what's his name? Um, my God, the goat of power lifting. Anyway, the greatest right. power lifters of all time. He has never missed a rep. In the Russian guy? He has, he has, no, no, no. Um, Hungarian? Georgian? Goat of power lifting. No, um, I mean, I watched the Olympic gold for weightlifting. I, I not 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 uh, not not weightlifting, powerlifting. Ed Cohn. Ah, powerlifting. Ed, powerlifting. Uh-huh. So for the squat, the squat, the deadlift, and the bench press, those are the the three powerlifts. So Ed Cohn has in in his training career, he never ever missed a rep. He never, in other words, he never trained to failure. I mean, it's a competition, yes, but in training, he never missed a rep, and which means he was just always going. Sub maximal, in other words, below your ten, your your ten the wall. Uh, rate of perceived wall. exertion, right? And so what you're doing is you're making medium weights easy, as opposed to making hard weights slightly less hard. And uh, that's always been my. That's always. I mean, this year, I this year I pressed. Uh, this year I pressed twenty eight kilogram kettlebell o- o- overhead first time wow. my entire life at one hundred forty pounds, which is you know. Impressive enough, but not yeah, I, for I, your weight. Pre- no, I, mean, I want to press a 30. My goal this year is to press the 32, but I got to pressing the 28 by largely working on uh, on the 20s and the 24s, you know. Um, and then I tried the 28 and then maketa na siya because I was doing it easy. And so, and, and so you're right, like I'm very chill. My, my strength training regimen is very chill, very forgiving, very kind. And it but my it mental, worked. my mental gate, and it worked. I was able to it press twenty eight. Yeah, but uh, but uh, my my mental game has not been the same. So yeah, I, I need to I need to kind of reconcile those two things, as as you said, tamaka, absolutely yeah. correct. Again, it's neuroplasticity, right? Uh, I mean, the problem is that, of course, because of evolutionary biology, uh, my term for it is anti- anticipatory anxiety. No, because of our because we used to live, I don't know, in the bush, near the bushes and the lions could eat us, our ancestors had to develop these anticipatory skills. No, But we're not living in the same world, and yet we inherited the same brains, right? At the same time, we're lucky that even though the structure of our brains are similar to our ancestors, the, the pathways, our neural pathways, can be manipulated in a good way. No? So if you have good habits of thoughts, not for one day, not for one month, but do it for one year and so so for instance, I'm a day, if I, I don't write a day, I get crazy. Like I need to write at least one thing a day, right? Like it's, it's now a habit, right? I need to gym at least three times a week. It's a habit right now, right? Like the, now the problem is that when I don't, when I'm, it's a vacation, I, I, I get jittery. Like I should do something, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you have to find also a new philosophy and habit for your low times. That's why one thing I came across is this, it's called, it's the Greek way of doing this. So in the ancient times, they did it like that. They would do hundred, then they would do 30, then they would do 70, then zero, then 100. This was the, the, the calisthenics of ancient Spartans and Greeks. And it makes perfect sense, right? Your ability not to go 100, 0, 100, 0, 100, 0, but go 100, 
30, 70, zero, rest and 100. You, you know what I'm saying? Like that sequencing, ah. is very, very, it's, it's like a symphony. It's like mm. there's a mathematical thing to it. That, that was revolutionary to me when I was like, yeah, if you look at it in, in, in the music, you have to have a proper sequencing. You, know, you don't go binary, you don't go rough. And if you do the same thing in exercise, you do the same thing in work and all, you can turn out healthier, happier, and and more successful even in whatever. Yes, you're. yes, exercise. I mean, I don't get inj- I don't get injured anymore. You know, when I, yeah. you know, the last my the last deadlift I did was kind of like it was probably seventy percent or maybe even sixty percent of my max. I knew I was getting stronger even if I, even if lumili pa the weight, but and it's great and and because I don't get injured, I get to train more. I mean, what's the point? For example, I, I'm trying to find an equivalent of this in life. If I chased a PR deadlift every time I lifted, exactly. and then I injure ako, and then I'm out for three months, nag mag regress yung mag regress exactly. yung strength gains ko. I think I'm trying to, and, and I think that's an analogy for for life also. If you burn yourself out, and then you just become a freaking zombie for a while, or you just like produce really crap things because you burned yourself out. It's 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 not it's not it's not worth it. Um, um, I, I like, for me, the problem is, and I noticed that with myself is that because we have this cult of once you do this great thing, pede kana mic drop. You know what I'm saying? You know mm-hmm. this idea that you have to push yourself to the super limit, achieve something great, and kahit crappy kana after that, wala ka na nagawa. Okay na yan. Kahit injured kana for basa you achieve the the you know the peak of the summit or whatever. And 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 that's my point. Like isn't parang but life can be more than that, right? I mean, and, and so when I started mountaining, I watched about, you know, documentaries about mountaineers and all. Their philosophy was very helpful to me, right? Like, if, if you just think about, I'll just do the Everest, and but you do it in a bad, rushed way. But why not? You can do Everest every three years. And then you can do the six other peaks around the world throughout the t- next three years. You can actually do it properly. Just maayos ka, wag kang sabog, wag kang bara-bara. Oh, no, right? Exactly, like, my my jujitsu coach is a 70 plus year old 100 pound asian woman wow she's like a brutal black belt i know like she could like but she's because she's old years. and she 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 she's not as fast as the young turks she's not as strong as the young turks and because she's very light her jujitsu philosophy is always skill based so what can you do based on skills without using your attributes don't use your strength yeah, and so and she she's like if you're doing jiu-jitsu and sobrang hinihingal ka na, you're actually doing something wrong because you're relying on your attributes. If you're uh, getting good, you're relying on the attribute of strength or speed up. to get it. So you're not you're not focusing on on technique. the technique, right? And um, that's, that's that's also reinforced. That's, that's also been great for me, and it's. I'm very glad that I'm learning jujitsu not under a young stud who has, yeah, yeah. you know, washed more abs, but under like a, a 70 year old Japanese, 70 plus year old, 100 yeah. pound Japanese woman. Yeah. yeah. Technical, very technical. Oh, I, perhaps I wanted to end on this note. Sorry, it's already 1 a.m. I still have one more piece. Oh. Something to check in of the. Um, oh. um, shops, big no, no, no. Okay, again, it Remember the other time you talked about your penchant for because so we talk about the Michelin and all of the posh and they said no, no no what I like is this kind of a midrange uh good wine that you know that anyone can drink any you know dude pareto chung broken drink now I really like that discussion I think really many people appreciate it although I'm not really into alcohol and all of that as much um yeah but but speaking of um this because I a skeptical person can say in what oh of course say Darian Leloy you know they're relatively oh. privileged guys they have this they have supportive people of course they can talk about all of this self-care self-help blah 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 but what about me I have two sons I have two days I have to, like what is your advice to those kind of people I know now it's sounding like self-help but because I have oh, my, 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 I don't think I can really give advice because tong having having said that you know like I live in the U.S., so I, I run my I run my own household um, together with my wife. We you know I do the cooking, um, we do the cleaning together, um, and so well, so, so, long, so well, I'm driver, it's, it's exactly. a driver. Bur- it's a very burdensome. It's not burdensome. I mean, it's very burdensome relative to the life of someone who's privileged in the Philippines. The Philippines exactly. Um, yeah. So so um, one thing that's helped me very part- very specific is um, si Cal Newport. I don't know if you've read the work of Cal Newport. He's no, an no, academic. No. He also specializes 
he also specializes in kind of productivity. And he writes for the New Yorker. Yung mga and deep work, guys. Yeah, see, the deep, deep, the work. deep yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. yeah. And so, so in deep work, you know, he has a very specific recommendation there, which I think, you know, I, I've been, I, I've been doing it on and off since for 10 years now. It's, it's just time blocking. It's just schedule your day, like schedule your day. So after this, it's going to be nine o'clock, nine thirty here. I'm going to like write down my schedule for the day and then plot in na yung plot yeah. in na yung yung ano yung yung self yung so self, how can you not be obsessed with there? that? Because that's my problem. I'm very schedule oriented person. Even my energy allocation, like I'm like almost I can say in my mind, 800 calories for this. Now. Like but the problem is that it creates rigidity. Like my my worry is I, I'm becoming rigid. I'm becoming too obsessed with this. I don't want to say my. I'll, I'll I'll get back I'll get back to you, Richard. Because I'm and dami ko ng apps na med this this year and baka baka sumobra because I am scheduling. Yeah. Speaking of calories, I'm trying to gain weight this year, so I'm trying to eat You're at approximately. No? Uh, I'm gay. I, I, I'm. It's quantified, so I'm. I'm trying to. Be, uh, gay, I'm trying to eat a 300 calorie, 300 to 400 calorie surplus per day wow. to gain weight, and I and I have to eat at least 130 grams of protein, and I have an yeah, yeah. app. So I don't know if this is going yeah. to be. I'll get back to you after six months because like you please? Yeah, scheduling yeah. scheduling my day tracking my calories in that specific way it might it might actually lead to the kind of burnout we were just talking about yun nga, yun nga. so I, I i'll get back to you but so far so good as long as i balance it out with uh, with with other things that are less burnout oriented like you know like thank you lele thank you yeah. so now uh, uh -huh. maybe next time i'll bring a treadmill to our i'll uh -huh. talk to you from gym no or something okay. like Maraisa Leloy, oh wow, this is oh, oh. better than I than I thought. Uh, you know, thank you so much for. No, I mean, this is we talk on this when we talk about politics and all that. I like it. I love it. It's important. It's part of my life. But parang, there's so much. I know we are. There's so much more to myself and you and other people that we can discuss, right? And and that's my thing. Like when people tell me, "Ano ba talaga audience mo?" Like, I can't say it because I don't want to be pigeonholed because there's so oh. many things I still want to discuss, and I believe there's an audience out for it. I just have so, to reach, sino, out, reach out to them. Yung audience mo, kung sino yung may kinig. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. exactly. Yung iba kasi, eto ka na, ikaw yung food vlogger, ikaw yung political vlogger. It's like, no, I want to do all. It's like, because, you know, I like food. I do MMA. I do, you know what I'm saying? Like, why should I be confined? Wala akong pakay kung walang manood dun sa MMA ko. But eventually, they will. They have no choice. Yeah. Kasi ipapasok na. Like, I know it sounds ADHD, but, but this is what Renaissance men were all about. Ancient people were all about. They were all about being all around, right? And, uh -huh. and, that's why I appreciate in this in this podcast because practically 99% of podcasts I do are purely political economic analysis, right? Or historical analysis. But with you, I have this opportunity to talk about, you know, all of this. Who got from the basis? Martial, so, you can even talk about martial arts. I'm so exactly, glad. Exactly. This, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, what's happening with UFC, blah, blah, blah. So I really appreciate it, bro. Like, um, it makes the world less lonely. <laughs> just put it that way. So, you know, therapy, I'm just oh, telling therapy. you. So, salamat for your free therapy. again. Yeah. To be honest, the people, the comments here are just nice comments. The people are just saying, enjoy your training, Leloy. Sabi ni Antonio. Si Mitch sabi niya, judo rin is similar to jiu-jitsu. But of course, jiu-jitsu is an offshoot of judo, right? That's okay. That was Brazilian jiu-jitsu and all. So marami na to. It's mostly the really positive comments and all of that people are appreciating. Ito si Ana Victoria sabi niya, Interesting discussion, Foucault and Derrida. structural. Okay, let's not go muna to Derrida. Okay, I'll talk about him later. Um, ito sabi ni Narjaline Dalmasha, coping mechanism to ko noon when I was feeling low, I talked to myself, never ending question myself of what went wrong and what would like to be. Madalas pinapakinggan ko pa, pinapagalitan ko pa sa, okay, yeah, so yung yung problem din natin, yeah. So don't worry, you're not alone. And that inner voice, yung pestang yan, uh, you have to train, it's like a baby. Yeah, It's like an annoying baby who can, is so good and helpful but it can also be annoying. So, we oh, masugit, oh, mercurial. Oh. And, my, and my, my, you know what, one, my, my, what makes it interesting since we talk about the debate days, like, it's the same voice, eh. Like, oh, the same guy who was badgering me, no? He's badgering me today. Like, oh. like, chill lang, bro. Do you go now? You must be the goat. You must be gonna. Come on, man. And, and just to end on this note, actually, 
the whole World Cup thing was a philosophical moment for me because I'll be honest, I more relate to Cristiano Ronaldo for understandable reason for a lot than Messi, right? For a long time. And what I liked about Cristiano was that he was obsessed, obsessed with self-improvement, right? And a little bit narcissistic, you know. But Messi was always just a natural guy. And guess oh. the goat now? The natural guy is the goat. The guy is just chill. He's just being himself and all. And the guy is obsessed about is I don't know, somewhere in Saudi Arabia, you know, playing football there. So, I don't know. For me, I because for a long time, I thought the Christian Ronaldo was the way. You just constantly push yourself. I don't know if you have seen, go on YouTube and post. Uh, there are lots of videos there of players saying why you shouldn't have dinner with Christian Ronaldo. Because apparently, oh. Once you eat, after 30 minutes, he says, let's go to gym. Then let's go to swimming. You know, because he has to burn all the color like the guys. You know, maybe, you know? maybe, ano, maybe another model is Roger Federer. Roger Federer, for, uh, for, it sounds like he's just a really chill guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, was even a kind of late bloomer. Right? He, exactly. he discovered training kind of tennis kind of late um, yeah. and developed other skills before that. And, and he's always had that perspective that there is a yeah, life. I mean, he's the goat. He's my goat, yeah. oh, Federer. I mean, I love Nadal. I love Djokovic. No, not Djokovic. <laughs> Ante Vaxer, yun. But, uh, and the new ones who are coming in. But ako, or Moray, was nice. But ako, for me, I was always a Federer guy. I, I really just... The perfect gentleman. He's the perfect gentleman. So, perfect gentleman. He's, a, he's, a, he's a picture of excellence that makes you hopeful about life. Because there are other people who are a picture of excellence and make you stress about life. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ano ba na-achieve mo? Ano ba hindi mo na... Siya, oh. para... You know what? Life, can, life is good. <laughs> life is good, you know? That's why I love any the fashion. I love his fashion. What GK... Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe I should do less Christian Ronaldo, more Federer. And kind of Messi gives me a Federer vibes, to be honest. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> they okay. Are too, yeah. Salamat, bro. Thank you. Alright, salamat, bro. Oh. Sige, sa uli then. Okay. Talk to you soon, ha? God bless. Okay. 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 Bye. Have a good day.